Hello, everyone. Um, this is my first video in uh, Abby Fle Flexi Capture. Uh, I'm trying to to help you all because I have been struggling at the early days of working with um, with Abby Flexi Capture. It's a very strong uh, tool, but uh, there are few uh, few YouTube uh, videos uh, or material available, and actually the documentation is very is very difficult. And uh, to work with, and unfortunately, you're not working with very straightforward uh, documents. So this video was intended initially to help you uh, have a step by step in in working with um, a little bit difficult um, table. Uh, hopefully, I can be very helpful. So the document here, it's a, it's a dummy one. I have created it, uh, but I tried to make it. Um, as real as possible. Uh, so we have a company name, but I actually added uh, a Mersic. That's a very uh, famous a famous carrier name. Uh, so the document consists of two pages. Um, as you can see, the, the same header repeats again. And the other one, uh, that is the table that we're looking for. The item description of charges, quantity, uh, unit of measure, currency, unit price, uh, the ROE and the total. And as you can see that this, in the first page, uh, there are five uh, instances that we want to return. And in the second page, there are six and seven. And for the first time, when you look at the, the, the page itself, it's very strange because um, because of the structure of the table itself, it doesn't have, of course, the, uh, the separators between each instance and the other, which makes, makes it a little bit difficult working with Abby. And the second thing is, um, for a human being, it's readable. You can know, uh, OK, documentation administration fee and the VAT all are included under uh, item. But we have made them um, separately because this has a price and this has another price. Um, but as you can see, there are, they are not uh, following the same pattern. So three, three sentences. It should continue as three sentences, but it's not the same as instant two. And as you can see, in instant three, there are only two. And also, if you can notice that the first instant, for example, the documentation administration fee, that's actually one sentence, but it was divided on two because of the space constraint. So um, it's it was very challenging at the beginning, but I was able to finally find a solution for it and uh, hopefully this can help you as well also as you can see that it, it follows for the same um uh, for the second page for the second page and there is an entire region that could be included in the table by mistake if we're not careful uh, at the beginning of the the document uh, i always recommend that you read um the documents uh, not read have a, an overview of it um how many pages, uh, which um, which blocks, which items you want to return. Um, if you have more than one sample, look, have a look on all the samples available because, uh, for example, what makes it a little bit challenging here is um, the table is floating. So what I mean is if there were only three instances, the table will end here. Um, and it couldn't. It could just. It wouldn't be continuing for the second page. So when does the table begin and when does it end? It actually depends on the sample itself. It's not well structured that always the table is in front uh, of a certain block or always at the same place. No, it could be like seven instances like here. It could be just two. It could be like 10. Maybe if it's very long enough, it could reach for the third page as well. So that's an overview. Okay, let's go to business. So here is Abby and I have made some, some dirty work at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to just uh, go with every everything that I made, but again, I'd assume that you already know the basics. Um, when I created the, the 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 project, I I made the file as a multi-page document, so it can accept that. Okay, the document starts in the first page and it ends 
and the second or the third, it depends on the, uh, the footer that I choose. So for the header, I noticed that it always starts by the carrier name, which is Mercic, and the title, which is text invoice. So I added them here as a required item. And please search for this in this block. And the way I got the block is I just use the tool and I'm, I'm telling Abby that, okay, search in this specific um, um, block inside the, the document, nowhere else. And then I just copy the, 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 the rectangle and add it here. And ta-da, it's easier for the document now to, for Abby to search for this doc, for this uh, word, Mercic, in this specific region. For the text and voice, I told it that, no, don't search um, specifically in a place. It will be always below Mercic, and it will be the uh, the right of, of Mercic by negative 30. Okay, so I can find it here. And I said that it, it's nearest to the element that is Mercic for the instant that if there is another text and voice in this area, because the area is very actually, it's very huge. So by doing this, I'm just limiting that the first instant nearest to Mercic. Okay, take it as the, the header of the document. And as for the footer, I noticed that there is a company closure. And uh, of course, the closure here is dummy, but I chose something that I am sure that it will be at the end of the document itself. So I am, I, it's a text, it's a search a static text, company closure, and the region just below the, uh, the header. And because it's a multi-page document, so it starts the below the below uh, the below here means that it will look in, in the entire first document and then the entire second document. And when I said page bottom edge, it's the the last page nearest to the last page, and it was captured. Okay, so there was something else I wanted to do that. There is an, a, a, a search element in Abby. Oh, wait a minute. It's called a table element. Okay. Uh, where, 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 where is it? I think it's uh, it's below. Okay, that's a table element. The table element is very is very good, but unfortunately, most of the documents are not well structured. They're readable for a human being, but it, they are not very structured for Abby to work with. So I don't recommend to use uh, table elements. Uh, instead, uh, using repeating groups are better for most of cases. And I, I, I personally um, like the fact that I, I choose a general approach to solve any problem because it gives you flexibility to work with whatever you're going to watch. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say that in order to, uh, the repeating group simply works as whenever you see another instance. So there is a master column. That is the column that exists in every, um, in every line of the table. It defines a new uh, information, a new, a new line. Okay, so let's take item, for example, if it was the master column, it will take this one as the, the, the column beginner, and it will look down. If something was repeated again, then there is another instant. So two is another instant, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then go whatsoever until finally it's no more. So for this, I need to define two things. First of all, let's add the repeating group itself. It's the last element. Repeating group, no, it's not required. It's optional. Uh, so in case if the, if the table doesn't exist for, for whatever, uh, the document doesn't crash or tells you that there is something wrong. No, it could uh, the table could appear or could not appear. Um, for me, I prefer to have more than, than, um, than just one, maybe let's two or three. 
so for for example, if I made something um, wrong, or if my hypothesis, or if my constraints are not um, are not good enough, another uh, the tree of hypotheses will just show me that there is something wrong here. There is no nothing we need here. Okay, the relations. Right now, I don't need anything. I'm just going to, to show you that what I need. In the repeating group itself, I just want to, uh, that, or that's how I approach the problem. I want to define the beginning of the table and the end of the table. So the header and the footer of the table. So I noticed that it's always, always, the table starts below the header itself and always above that footer. So that's the constraint that I'm going to use always below the uh, the header of the table and always above that footer. So these are the two things that I want. Um, let me first tell you how I how I created this. The first thing is I have created the uh, align element and instead of using a certain or specific word like quantity or a description of charges or ROE, I chose an entire line of element and I named it as table header. Simply, it's optional. Okay, and the line of elements does this for the accuracy, uh, but I will go the default. Okay, the child, the child's here means that every one of them is a column or a name in that line. As you can see, item, then description of charges, then quantity, then unit of measure, etc. So I'm defining all in the same align uh, alignment. So item is first, then description, then quantity from the left to right. And each one of them you can choose if you want to add a new one. For example, you have to choose the type itself. And because all uh, because th this is a header, though uh, therefore it's a static text because I know that exact that this column is exactly item. It's nothing else. It's not a character string or whatever. And uh, the description goes the same. You then here you add the variation of the uh, the word itself that you the text that you're going to search for. Um, and then you can add the relations. So I made it that it's always below the header or Mersic or a text invoice, something above. And you can find it here. Why? Because there is another one here and I don't want it to, to, to take it, for example. So it will be always below this line and always above this line. And it has to look for a, a line of elements. So even if there's some kind of word here called description, it will not take it. For, why? Because there is no item left to it. And then, okay, so now I have I have figured the first the first thing, that's the header of the table. Now for the, the tricky part, the table footer. So in order to do this, I have made a little twist. I made the search element here, a static text called VAT uh, registration number. Um, why? Because it's in a very strategic place because there is a separator in front of it and this separator actually, it's a footer. It depends on the page, and it it, it happens in it, it repeats in every page, and it's not part of the of the table itself. Um, so I have created that footer separator, and it's very simple. It's a separator. It's a horizontal one, and the relation it's simply it's above the vat, and the nearest to the vat. So definitely it's that one. It can never be anything else. Even if uh, this table ended here and, uh, and, the, and the table footer uh, was here, it will take this one because it's the closest or the nearest to that rig. So that's the first. The second one is I want to go to the second page. And also because I want to have uh, to return the values in the table, I don't want this area to be uh, any kind of hindrance. So... I want to take them out of the equation. So I have to get another 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 separator, which is this one. Okay. So I have defined another second logo, which is Mersic, and simply it's below the VAT registration number. And it was above the the, the closure. In order to, to narrow 
to narrow down the, the, the space, okay? And it's nearest to the vat. So it got me the, the Mersic. And then I have made something else, another separator, okay? And this separator always repeat <laughs> with each page, the same as the, the footer of the page itself. So simply, it's a, it's a separator, it's, a, it's optional, it's horizontal, and it's below the second logo, and it's nearest to the second logo. Though. So definitely, it's the first one here. Um, and uh, the same as um, as the previous separator, it's b just below Mersic, and it's the nearest to Mersic. So definitely, it will be the second one. So why did I do this? Okay, for the next step. Uh, the next step simply is I'm going to make a region. That's another element that we can use. Just add a new element and there is a, a region element, okay? Uh, and in the region element, I have defined, I wanted to exclude, I, I named it excluded region and simply it's below, below the, this separator, and above this separator. And the negative 10, just to take into consideration that um, to not take to not take the, any, any separator or uh, if the quality of the pages is wrong, uh, so it doesn't um, mistake uh, some dots for a, a word or a letter. Um, okay, so this is the separate, this is the region that I will be, that will exclude it in, uh, in the table. Okay, so now I needed another line of elements, and this is the second one if if it was repeated. So it's optional because if the table ends in the first page, this element will be not available. It will not return anything. So I, it has to be optional. And I said that this this line will always be under the excluded region. Why? Because the excluded region ends in the second page, if any. Okay. Um, okay. So that is the another the other he header, and I had to make another separator because there is another separator, the one the one that exists here. Um, but this time I wanted to to separate it, and I will tell you uh, why in a second. And then finally we got our. <laughs> The one that we're looking for, and that is the table footer. It's a separator. It's below the the um, the table header in the beginning of the table. Okay. Why did I choose this one? Because the table the table footer could be existing in the in the first page. So I have to make um, a general approach. So it's definitely below below the the first header, and it could be like wherever it is but but you have to exclude the region so any separator in this region just exclude it and the separator here for the second repetition for the header excluded as well and in that case it will definitely return to me the table footer itself so now I got the, the header and I, uh, the, the, the header for the table and I got the footer for the table. So now let's go to business. The repeating group itself, as I said, it's optional. And the relation, I will add simply that it's, it is below the table header. Okay. And as you can see, no, below. It will always be below the header, okay, and it will be above the separator that we create, the table footer. Okay, so if uh, whenever in doubt, and actually let me do something, let this be negative, negative 10, negative 10. Why? Because sometimes uh, the... Um, the words coincide with the uh, the line itself, so it could be confusing for Abby. So so I give myself some space. 
So whenever in doubt, you can just look and that's perfect. We're now capturing the entire table. That's the upper and lower boundary for the table. And right now we're ready to insert our first column. Okay, the way we work with uh, repeating groups, okay, we don't use static text anymore. We use character strings or paragraphs or another another elements, but not the static text because I don't know exactly what's going to, re to be returned in the table itself. So let's use, um, for when you have some kind of experience, uh, I choose something and it suits me very well. Um, I will choose the total to be my master column. And why is that? Because with every new instant, something is being defined. And if there is nothing to be defined, I will leave it empty. Just return empty, empty space. So I will use the total. And it's required for it to be the master column. And let's, and let me actually constrain it. Set this column is only numbers, dots, and commas. The relation. Um, right now, I don't have to define the, the, the upper and lower boundary because it has already been defined in the repeating group itself. So now it's my duty to, to define the right and the left boundaries. And I will use the, the table header, this one. Okay, and that's okay left. <laughs> Negative um, 2,000, no, 2,500. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Okay, and let's fix it to be the left always. That's the reference and duplicate. Let's get the right of left. And then instead of negative, we will leave it. And this one, let it be 2000. No, okay, 190. So exactly now I'm capturing the first column. Okay, it will never get outside this. And by default, I have to find the upper and lower. Okay, and the nearest, I prefer to do the nearest um, uh, for, for the arrangement. Okay, so I choose something. I know for sure that it's in the top page. And now let's match and look at the instances. And that's what I... I was talking about that no it took oh my god I, I forgot that the repeating group itself i needed to exclude the region i didn't do that that's what i was talking about that this region is going to interfere and it will get me some undesirable uh results uh so let's now i have excluded it and it, actually i should have excluded something else the line of elements and the separator as well. So now let's work our magic. And if we look now, we have got the nine instances here and then 10, 11, 12, 13. So the 13 instances available. And actually, it was good to, to, to look what happens if I did not exclude this region. That's why I took so many time to, to, to define this region, uh, to exclude it. Okay, that's our master column. Okay, the master column itself, it means that it has to exist so that Abby can um, work its way inside the table. If it, if it couldn't find, if Abby couldn't find uh, a record inside this, column, this particular and required column, uh, it will not return anything. So um, make sure that you choose something that you can rely on. Okay, let's add the others as well. So character string, okay, the ROE. This time it's optional. And I could um, use the same reference from uh, the, the line element, but for 
for for making it easy so let's refer from the right left off right okay and using like 300 or 300 okay that's good and then duplicate and then this time you need the right of left negative let's say 800 no that's too much 600 okay five 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 okay that's good and i prefer to to use also the nearest so i will use it again and then let's find out okay it was returned but there was something i have missed in these in these instances they were 13 but now for each two for the, these two only coincide in front of one so i had to do something pr uh, before that and that was one of the tricks that i uh, that I tried it's a workaround okay so i have defined a wide gap okay this wide gap it will be below every instant that it finds in the master column and it will definitely be above the next instant so as you can see this is the wide gap okay so i'll tell abby to look for every every instant that it's below the above of the of the instant of the current instant and above the below or the bottom of the white gap so it will only look at this region it found it found something yes it found the one but after this instant it will find nothing it will just find this empty space so it will return it uh, like nothing so to do that the white gap i have to define its its height i need it to be very very small because the the space here it's very it's very tiny so i have to decrease it and the relation will be very simple i will add very to the total okay it will be below it and nearest to again tax invoice okay and let me just drag it above and let me run again but this time i have to define a few other things i define the right and the left but now i have to define the above the lower and the above boundaries okay so i will add this a total that the instant that i'm looking for is always below I'm sorry, below the top. And I'll give myself like negative 5 or negative 10 of the, of the total. And will always be above the bottom above the bottom of the white gap okay so this time if i'm looking careful i only got this space for this instant and in the second it will be just an a very empty space very empty space so it will return nothing so let let's see what will this look like Okay, so the, I forgot something, the white gap itself. I should have included it. The total, left, zero, left of right. Okay, and right of left. Zero. And now when I work work my way,
And as you can see, I have got some of the answer, but not all. And the reason for that, the repeating group, I need to decrease. Let's work with like 0.9 for now. And look again. OK, so now I have made it. What happened here is because the, because Abby is missing some items, it's not sure the quality of the of the tree hypothesis becomes lower. And since it gets it gets lower, uh, the look, the chain quality is 93. So actually, I need to, to decrease the repeating group again, maybe 0.8 or something. It's the cost of getting exactly the numbers that I'm looking for. So exactly 13 instances, uh, it will be, and, and as you can see, the 12 is in front of the 12. Uh, I will get what I want, but anything else, it will be just like empty. Nothing will, uh, will take place. Okay. So let's continue. So it's a character string. It's the unit price, price, okay. And I have to repeat the same, so it's the total, but it will be, let's refer to the right, because all they are aligned on the right, so it's easier to take a reference. Um, let's say 500. No, more 600. Okay. That's one duplicate. Okay, the right off, right by negative, maybe at 100, 850. Okay, that's good. And also, I have to duplicate again. But this time I'm going to be say it's below the top, but just negative five. And duplicate again, but this time I'll change it to the white gap above the, the bottom by negative five. Okay, and again, the nearest to tax invoice. <clears throat> okay, so now that I have finished all the uh, the columns except for the disc the, the description itself, uh, this is another reason uh, why what I, what I have done has created. Okay, if, so let's now say that I want to have this this description. It will be the same, but this time it will be a paragraph instead of a character string. Paragraph element. Okay, let's say description. Optional and relations. As well as them, I will, I referred all of them to total. Um, so that if there is something wrong that happened, the entire table will crash, but I will have fewer places to look for the problem itself. Uh, okay, so left of right. And it's negative, negative um, 1800. Oh, that's left. Okay. Now we need the right. Okay. Not the currency, I said total. A current instant, okay. Okay. Native, no, that I need to 2000. 2000, 2100, no. Zero, seven, for example. Okay, that's good. Okay, so it's always the right, duplicate, the left. No, and I think, I think, 
800, no. So, one four. That's very brilliant. And again, I'm going to do the uh, the upper and lower boundary. So the total. So it's always below the top. But just negative five. And finally, it's always above the bottom by negative five, but this is the white gap. Okay, the white gap. Let's save it. Nearest again. Why do I choose nearest uh, for the arrangement? So I can get instant one, then two, then three, then four, then five, because Abby tends to, to make things random. So I can get the first instance and then the third and then the sixth. So I just wanted to repeat to, to look uh, through the table from the, from the top to the bottom as we regular human beings do. So uh, we're looking for the white gap. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're looking for the title of the page, and that is the tax invoice. Okay. So what happened here is that I have done something very interesting. Uh, note that let's get this here. That the first, uh, as I said in the, the early of the video, that the description of the first instance documentation administration fee, it was actually a same, a same sentence because it has just one uh, value for the total. Uh, so it was brought as a single instant. Why? Because of the use of the white gap. Uh, and the second line, it was, it was instant number two. So what happened here is when, when I get the output of this, um, when I get the output of, um, uh, of this document, I'll get an Excel file with, um, um, I would do some manipulation because one will have a single instant empty. So I have to merge uh, or just, I, I just leave it uh, as zero it is. And, and by doing what I did here in this video, I was able to, to, to return the entire table excluding all of the uh, the unnecessary uh, items and as well i was able to get um without any kind of errors um and use it, just you need to, to to focus on uh, does it is there a single or um or there is a pattern that repeats itself from a sample to another i always try to use the general approach uh, because it gives me the flexibility that I need. Uh, always look for a very good header for the table and a very good footer for, for the table in order to get what you want. Um, this layout is very flexible. So if the table changes and it was in the first page, it will just behave the same. Uh, nothing will, will, will differ. Uh, yes, there will be uh, in the output, there will be some kind of manipulation using Excel. Uh, but I think that I did more than just good enough. Um, when you're talking about, you could use RPA, you could use another tools to, to manipulate that. So hopefully that uh, this video was, I know it was a little boring, <laughs> uh, but I hope it was very uh, insightful for you. And don't forget to, to like the video if you liked it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and share it. Um, and thank you very much.